All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen and give you guys a overview on who I am. That way you guys get to know me um, and get to know who it is that you're learning from, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and get- started. My name is, what's up you guys? My name is Miss Derby, AKA the Land Queen. Would you believe that just a few years ago, I was teaching in the school system, living paycheck to paycheck, to now creating a strategy where I supply vacant land to home builders. Wait, can you guys see the video? Hold on. Just let me know if you guys can see it. There we go. Perfect. Just want to make sure. Okay, let's start it over. So just an intro about who I am. What's up, you guys? My name is Miss Derby, aka the Land Queen. Would you believe that just a few years ago, I was teaching in the school system, living paycheck to paycheck? to now creating a strategy where I supply vacant land to home builders. I run a million dollar business now, but it wasn't always that easy. Back in 2015, I worked in the school system teaching students that had behavioral and special needs. I enjoyed the time I had with my students, but it really took a toll on me emotionally and mentally. I wasn't happy and I knew something had to change. However, the teacher in me felt really guilty because I was letting my students down. I knew that I had to bet on myself and make a change. When I quit my job back in 2018, I had no idea what I was going to do to make ends meet. I was serving, flipping furniture, until one day I discovered the concept of wholesaling real estate. I was super intrigued and starting to dive into the concept learning from different gurus, soaking up all there is to know about wholesaling. I started closing deals here and there, but the day-to-day -day practices of wholesaling houses really took a toll on me. I hated walking through those nasty properties, trying to figure out what the comps were, what ARV was, I didn't even know what ARV meant. I even at one point got hospitalized because I got attacked by fleas at a property. From there, I knew there had to be an easier way to wholesale. At that point in my journey, I had already wholesaled a few land deals, and I realized that wholesaling land was a lot easier than wholesaling houses. It was a lot easier comps, I didn't have to calculate the repairs, and it was 100% virtual. So naturally, I shifted my focus to land and worked really hard to find more land deals. In May of 2020, at the height of the pandemic, I was able to close a land deal for $103,000. And yes, even though that deal changed my life completely, the teacher in me wasn't fulfilled because I knew my land strategy had the power to impact so many lives. This is how the Land Queen was born. I created a unique land strategy that consistently allowed me to have six-figure months. I began to teach others to do the same, from those struggling to wholesale houses, like I was, all my friends, family, and everyday people looking for a way to financial freedom. In just a few short years, I was able to retire my dad from his nine to five and scale my business to seven figures. When I quit my job back in 2018, I would have never expected my life to take this course. And although I left the school system, I'm grateful that my impact goes beyond the classroom. Awesome. So that's a little bit about me. That way you guys can just kind of get familiar with my story because I don't want to, I didn't want to have to dive into that today on this call. I really wanted to teach you guys how you can get started and those next steps to do so, right? So my goal on this call is to make sure that every single person has the knowledge and skill set in order to start closing land deals. And as you guys heard in my video, I am an elementary teacher, uh, an elementary school teacher by trade. So today I want to take you guys into my classroom. So we're going to dive into that, right? On this next page, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this QR code up. If you have your phones, um, uh, this would be the time for you to scan this. Um, now, if you're joining me from, um, from a laptop or you're using your phone, I'll go ahead and put the link down below for you in the chat. And then that way you guys can start following along. This is going to be my workbook. Um, this is going to allow you to take notes and kind of follow, uh, follow along for the next steps of what to do. Okay. 
So let me go ahead and drop that down below. Um, that's gonna, oops, there we go. Okay, I just dropped it in there. So in this Dropbox, it's gonna look something kind of like this. Um, and this is going to um, give you the blueprint, right? So uh, the first, the strategies that I offer, um, market research, everything, and this will allow you to fill it in. Um, and you can easily do that on your phone as well. Okay, this will help you take notes. Um, okay, let me go back. All right. Now let's go ahead and jump into this. So today we're going to talk about why I focus on land, the four-step strategy, and then what land has been able to do for me. So just be ready to take notes. Um, okay, just by show of hands though, just so I can see, you know, what everyone's knowledge is in this room. Um, you guys can just actually put it in the chat or raise your hand. Um, or use a raise your hand feature, put a one in the chat if you are looking to add additional income into your household. Put a one in the chat. Okay. Honestly, everyone should be putting a one in the chat because everyone always wants to make more money, right? Um, and then my second question is, how many of you guys are brand new in real estate and literally just don't know where to start? Okay. Nice. So several of you guys. Now you're gonna, there's a lot to learn with real estate. You're gonna hear different strategies everywhere, right? But it, the focus is to really niche down, right? You don't wanna be hopping around because that's where you start losing focus. And then my last question is, how many of you guys have tried wholesaling houses but haven't been able to close deals consistently or even close a deal at all? Put a one in the chat if that's you. Okay, so of you guys. I know for me, when I got into wholesaling, I started on the houses side. I didn't know anything about land and I would close deals here and there, um, but I didn't close deals consistently enough to leave my nine to five, right? I did, couldn't leave that because it just wasn't enough money coming in consistently. Um, so that for me was why I loved and shifted my focus over to land. Um, okay, let's go ahead and jump in. Right. So before I dive into the step by step, I do want to like be honest about some of the qualities that need to you need to acquire in order to wholesale land, right? Um, and just be an entrepreneur, honestly, in general. Um, number one is to be able to critically think or solve problems, right? A lot of people come into this space and they think that because the concept of wholesaling is so simple, they can come in and just wholesale, like simply, like, it's not that easy, right? There's a lot of problems you need to solve. And as entrepreneurs, that's our goal is to solve problems, right? We need to be able to problem, uh, critically think, solve problems and come up with solutions to any issues. So that's number one. I think everyone just needs to have that built into their head now, right? Number two is to be creative right? As you're learning new skills and things like that, it's really important to be, um, not to be afraid of uh, rejection and failure. And that is to be able to start being more creative. If I wasn't creative in how I created the land niche, I wouldn't have the success I had, right? Um, so starting to be more creative and adding that to your tool belt is really what's going to help you. Number two is to be consistent. I literally cannot stress this enough. What I will say is consistency is what transforms people into being excellent, right? In order to be excellent, you need to be consistent. And everyone here has to be able to do that. So consistent marketing, consistent talking to builders, consistent with absolutely everything in this business, okay? So that is number one, I think, for the business in general. Yes, consistency is key, Jasmine. Um, number four, unlearn those bad habits, right? I remember getting into wholesaling um, and starting to close deals consistently. And one of the bad habits that I had to break was money management, y'all. Like your girl was spending money left and right, buying absolutely everything there is to buy. When I got a deal, made $10,000, thought it was, you know, I could just spend it, right? And that's not the right mindset you want to have. You really want to make sure that you are um, unlearning bad habits, that broke men mentality. And on, at some point, you just got to be serious about your life, okay? Being disciplined, honestly, is the strongest form of self-love. And that is something that everyone here needs to understand, right? If you love yourself and you want to give yourself the best life, you have to be more disciplined in those bad habits, okay? 
Yeah, Jasmine said me too, girl. It's it's a bad thing. And I'm a recovering people pleaser. So your girl was always buying things for other people. Like I needed to stop that. And the last thing is um, get more, be, get uncomfortable or sorry, get comfortable being uncomfortable, right? You want to make sure that being uncomfortable is something that you're going to be used to, right? And especially as entrepreneurs, once you get into entrepreneurship, you're going to realize that putting yourself first is not selfish. It's a necessity, right? And you need that mental space right now to be brilliant as you're building out this business. Um, and yeah, and unfortunately with being uncomfortable, sometimes that means you're going to have to sacrifice for a couple of years just for you to be comfortable for the rest of your life, right? So being uncomfortable is something that you have to get used to. I know with nine to fives, a lot of people, nine to five jobs, people look for that security blanket and knowing that they're going to get a paycheck every single week or every month, right? But with, with real estate or with entrepreneurship, you're not always going to get paid. So it's something that you have to have and set those expectations. Uh, but if you have the consistent consistency, the problem solving skills, the being creative, unlearning bad habits, those are things that's what's going to help you, um, you know, maintain and close deals consistently. All right, enough of that. Uh, why do I focus on land? Um, it's a very untapped area. A lot of people don't know about the land space, um, but trust me all, ooh, there is so much money out here in, in land. Um, I, in my opinion, wholesaling houses is a little saturated. Um, I mean, sorry, wholesaling houses. Yeah. Like I said, it's a little saturated in my opinion. Um, but with land, there's so much opportunity and there's so much you can do with it. Right. So let's talk about some of the benefits of wholesaling land versus houses. Ooh, it's my favorite part. No shade to anybody who wholesales houses. Y'all I'm just saying, this is like my personal opinion. Um, and honestly it's, you know, super factual. So number one, no more walkthroughs. It's 100% virtual. The number one thing I hate about wholesaling houses was the fact that I had to physically get ready, get in my car and go see a property, meet the property owners. And as soon as they opened the door and saw a black Haitian young girl, they're like, girl, get out of here. Like, you don't know what the heck you're doing, right? That was, they shut me down right away. And that was something that, um, you know, really hurt me. <laughs> I was not really confident in the space because of that. Um, but with land, y'all, it's virtual. Like you can close deals and live that soft life you want to live and be at the comfort of your home closing deals consistently. So I love, love, love that part. And then number two, it is less saturated. I touched on this a little bit, right? So being that it's less saturated automatically means that there's less competition, okay? So when I'm talking to sellers who, owned, um, who own houses, um, they've probably been contacted five times more than someone who owns vacant land, right? So it's just less saturated, um, um, less competition. It just allows you to close more deals consistently because of that. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some fun facts before we dive into the next benefits. Um, I do talk about this on my challenge for those who've been on it, um, but I feel like these statistics are super important because a lot of people miss are misled that the fact that there's not a lot of opportunity with land. Okay. Number one, did you know that we need over 5.5 million homes in order to keep up with the housing demand? Okay. We need 5.5 million homes. That's insane. And you know, who's going to be part of building that, uh, bringing that number down your girl right here. Right. Um, and I want you all to be a part of bringing that number down because at this point, if y'all see how expensive housing is, is it's just freaking insane. And we are part of that community of bringing those numbers down and putting people into homes right? Um, also, did you know that 40, I'm sorry, 70.4% of new construction that was built last year was all single family homes, y'all. 70% of all the new construction. And that's what I love. I love the single family housing space. Now, you don't always have to just focus on single family. I know a lot of people are like, hey girl, like I love me some multifamily now, right? Where there's opportunity for you there as well. Let's talk about what that looks like. Okay. Here it is right here. Um, we need to build 4.3 million new apartment units between now and 2035 in order to mitigate issues related to apartment demand. Y'all have you seen how expensive apartment complexes have gone? It's insane. Like, especially if you're in like the, the, uh, more popular metropolitan areas that are growing at a fa fast rate, like here in Tampa, um, apartments are insane. It's like, whoa, that's, it's just robbery. But because of that, I mean, it's caused because of demand. Whenever somebody, whenever demand is up, you know, prices go up, 
right? So it's just important to keep this in mind. We could be a part of the ones that provide these lots for these hedge funds to develop these apartment complexes. And that's where a lot of spreads come in, right? You can make over six figures per deal when you're playing around with these deals, okay? All right, back to our benefits. Number three, no calculating ARV. Put a, put a two in the chat if you are a licensed realtor and have access to MLS. Put a two in the chat, okay? Now there's a few of you guys that are gonna put two in the chat, but there are gonna be a lot that don't have a license. Like myself, I am not a licensed, licensed agent or broker. Um, I don't need one to do this, um, which is why I love this, uh, the land niche as well. You don't need a license to wholesale in a lot of the states. Um, but being that I don't have MLS access, I have to calculate, you know, calculating ARV was something that I struggled with, right? Um, but being that I wholesale land, I don't need to do that, right? I don't need to calculate the after repair value because there is no repairs on land, right? So it makes the process a lot easier. Um, number four. You can close more deals and scale your business a lot quicker. For those who follow me on my Instagram, I actually posted a reel about this, okay? My one builder can outbuy multiple cash buyers who are bit, um, fixing and flipping homes. And the reason why I say that is because if you think about it, for those who flip houses, you are what buying how many um, how many homes are you buying a year to fix and flip? What, three to five? Whereas my home builder is buying 500 lots and closing on them a month. Okay, a quarter, thousands of them per quarter. You know what I'm saying? So I can close a lot more deals and close deals consistently every single week, every single month with that one builder. So that's why I say you can scale your business a lot quicker. And being that it's virtual, you can have someone else virtually do it for you, right? And then number five, um, builders pay the earnest money deposit, okay? I know when I first started out with wholesaling houses, I had to put down my own earnest money deposit at the title companies. Um, for those who don't know, earnest money deposit is um, a deposit of good faith that you um, you provide to the title company. Um, and I didn't always have the deposit money. Sometimes it'd be $500 and you're going to have $500 back then to start. So when you work with builders, they put all that up for you. Okay, They have title companies that they work with and own to provide all that. So you really just come out of pocket to run your business and marketing. That's it. right? You don't have to buy the properties first. The builder takes all that over. All right, how are you guys liking the benefits so far? Put a two in the chat if you are liking those benefits. I wanna see what everyone's feedback is. Nice. Okay, now let's dive into how you all can start doing this, right? All right, let's go. And just a quick overview, um, for those who are not familiar with what wholesaling real estate is, um, wholesaling real estate is legal in all states except for the following three. Illinois, Oklahoma, and uh, the city of Philadelphia. Okay, I just want to make that very clear. Um, you have to have a real estate license in those states to do it. But let's say you live in those states and you want to wholesale in another state. You can do that, okay, without a license. Um, so that's just a disclaimer. Um, but just for everyone who doesn't know what wholesaling real estate is, this is it below. I, you know, I'm a teacher, so I like to break it down Barney style for y'all, right? So the seller, right? Um, typically how they teach you is for you to go out and find an ugly, distressed property, okay? In a nice neighborhood, right? So you're driving past, you see high grass, boarded up windows in a nice area. You would go out and reach out to that seller, okay? Contact them and say, hey, I see your property is, you know, abandoned. Are you interested in possibly selling? Okay, let's just say they say, absolutely, I'm ready to go, right? You offer them $50,000 and you set it up under contract, okay? As people who own LLCs, you can put a property under contract without an agent. Okay, I wanna make that clear. You get it under contract, let's say 50,000. And then what you're gonna do is take that contract now that you have equitable interest and you can take your contract and find a cash buyer to buy it from you at closing, okay? So let's just say I find a cash buyer who likes to fix and flip in that area and he's interested in it at 60,000, okay? I get it under contract with the buyer, bring both title, uh, both contracts to the title company, and they cut me a check for the difference, okay? Um, so that is wholesaling. You do it in all the states except for the three up listed above, and there's a lot of money that could be made. Um, a lot of people get into this space of real estate to make fast capital to start fixing and flipping or do, uh, doing other things, right? So it's the best entryway to get in. Now, 
with wholesaling land, your girl is does it a completely different way. Okay. And I want to break that down. So instead of finding my distressed seller first, I actually go out and find my buyers first, y'all, like my home builders. I reach out to them and say, hey, listen, I see you guys are developing new construction everywhere in the city. What do you need, right? What is your criteria? How much are you buying? Where are you paying? Tell me absolutely everything that I need to help you go out and find these lots. And we typically look for off-market lots for these guys, okay? Nothing on market. Once I go out and find my buyer and get that criteria, it's time for me to start hunting for deals, right? So I, it's almost like I flip the script, right? So then I go out and find those sellers. So if they say they're paying 60 grand, your girl's going to be finding sellers at and negotiating them at 50 grand. Get those two contracts, turn it into the title company, and I close my deals to make 10 grand. Now with builders buying so many lots, I can get a package of lots together and send it off and close those deals. All right. So that's wholesaling land. And this is my strategy and my method um, that I created back in 2020 that has allowed me to now make seven figures in my business. Not only me, y'all, I have students who do the same thing. Okay. I've been teaching this forever, for a while now, and have hundreds of success stories of people doing this. Um, and I do want to um, point out this um, step number one, which is choosing a market. Okay. Choosing a market. Um, I do want to show you this kind of uh, map here that I found. This is going to show you kind of what um, is out there in the U.S. Um, of pasture land, forest, cropland, special use, miscellaneous, urban. So um, if you guys look here, there is so much opportunity in land right now. Okay. So like, don't think like, oh, the land's going to run out. There's, there's so much land. We're going to die and go, die and go by the time the land starts running out. So there's so much opportunity for y'all. So number one, everyone write this down, is choosing a market, okay? That's the first thing you want to do. Obviously, get your LLC and all the foundational stuff done, but then you want to choose a strong market where you can close deals consistently, right? Okay, so it starts off by doing market research. Just because you see land in your area and you're seeing it for sale doesn't mean it's a high area where people want to build, right? You want to be in areas where new construction popping up left and right and land and housing is getting built and sold, okay? Um, so on Zillow, I want you guys to apply these two filters. I'll actually do this with you to show you, but if you want to take a picture or write this down, this is also going to be recorded for you to go back and rewatch on my YouTube. Um, but we'll do this together so you guys can kind of take a look and I'll do this here on my YouTube, um, or not my YouTube on my Zillow. Here we go. So let's go to Zillow. I'm going to just go in the state of Florida and show you the whole state. By the way, I'm in 23 markets here in the state of Florida. It's insane. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to show you is the new construction. I'm sorry, the land that has sold in the last 12 months. So we're going to keep this box that sold. We're going to go to price and leave that alone. Bed and bath, we'll leave that alone. And then go to home type. Instead of having um, all of this selected, I only want lots and land selected. Okay, and then I'll click apply. And then I'll go to more. Um, and then I want sold in the last 12 months. You see down here, guys, sold in the last 12 months. Then I want to click apply. And as you guys can see in the last 12 months, 57,000 lots sold in the last 12 months here in the state of Florida. Okay. And I can honestly go state by state if I wanted to, just to look at everything. Um, but really what you need to look at is those dots. You guys see all the dots everywhere throughout Florida. You really want to focus on where those dots are so you can choose the best markets. Okay. So I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm seeing a lot in central Florida. As you guys know, Disney's over there. Right. And then along the coastline by the water. Right. And there's a lot of activity down here on this, um, by like Lee County, um, Sarasota area. All right. And I'm over here in Tampa. So that's the lots that have sold. And that's kind of what you want to look at is the trends. Right. Now let's compare that to new construction. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep it as sold price, bed and bath, keep those alone. And then the home type is where you want to select houses, deselect lots and click apply. And then where it says more, you want to scroll down and you'll see year built. And I want to put 2022 because I want to see all new construction that was built, right? So I'm going to click that, keep it at lot, um, sold in the last 12 months and click apply. Okay. And as you guys can saw, the, the dots just shifted a hair, but look at 55,000 new construction homes sold in the last 12 months. 
And still, it's in the same area, Central Florida, Tampa, along the coastline by the water, right? Everyone loves the water. All right, go ahead and drop in the chat some markets that you guys want me to look at. We can take a quick look at it together. Okay, um, let me see. Let's do Georgia. Oh, it's Winter Garden. Let's see, Atlanta. Okay, you guys are dropping a bunch. Oh, here. Now, a good rule of thumb is to number one, you want to look at the surrounding area. So as you guys can tell, they put a border around Atlanta the minute I looked at it, right? Because this is the city limits. But Atlanta is not just, you know, where a lot of new construction is. You want to remove the boundary and look at the surrounding areas as well. So as you guys can tell, the amounts are 956 new construction homes in the last 12 months in the surrounding area. Um, which is good, your goal is to at least have 800 or more. Got it? 800 or more. Um, if you don't see 800 or more, it is not an area for you to invest your time in, right? Um, let's keep looking at what else. Um, let's look at Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. As you guys can see in the Charlotte boundaries, it already meets that number of 800 or more. Okay. If I wanted to switch it for land, it'd probably be around the same. But as you guys can tell, you see where the activity is at. Like I wouldn't want to be in the East Lake, you know, area because I don't see as much activity. But I'd love to be here in the center of Charlotte, right? Or or over here, or South um, Charlotte, right? You just want to make sure you're in areas where there's a lot of activity. Um, <laughs> Honolulu, Hawaii. Okay. All right, this is new construction and there's only five results. So would I be in Honolulu, Hawaii, guys? Yes or no? Let me know what y'all think. Exactly, no. <laughs> A lot of people ask me about New York and honestly, like, I don't even know what part of New York. I'll just put New York. Let's just do Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York. There's not even any new construction in Brooklyn, right? So let me remove the boundary. All right, 116 results. So would I be in New York? Probably not. Yeah, so let's look at Nashville, Tennessee. I'll do a couple more. Nashville, Tennessee is doing great. Actually, Nashville was in top uh, state for new construction in 2021, which is very surprising, okay? I'm gonna remove the boundary just a hair to do the surrounding. As you guys can see, that number is extremely strong. We're over in the 4,000s, 10 out of 10, okay? Someone said Alabama. And you see kind of how I'm analyzing these markets. I have students all the time that be like, Derby, like I've tried this. I looked in here and I looked there and, and I'm like, okay, well, let me see your market. And I look at their market, nothing. Y'all, this makes or breaks the whole entire process if you're not in the right area. So as you guys can tell, the whole state of Alabama has uh, 72. So I'm gonna just kind of zoom in. Let's go to Birmingham. Um, okay, Birmingham doesn't look too bad if you're in Birmingham and the surrounding areas. Um, and then as well as like just center of Birmingham. Okay, but I like to I like it to be well over like that 800 mark. So that way I can see. Let me give you guys a really good market. This is just a little uh, tip for everybody. Um, here in the state of Florida, we have a really good market called Lee County. Um, as you guys can tell, Lee County, just the the tiniest county is doing almost 4,000. Some states are not even doing this number, okay? So where am I gonna be at? This is the type of energy I, lead, I like, okay? I like this kind of energy. The whole state of Florida, this little tiny county, Lee County, is at four, almost 4,000 new construction. That's where I wanna run to, right? Um, just because the city's popular and big, like Miami doesn't mean it's an area where you would wanna invest your money and time in. Just a heads up on that. Yep, go where the demand goes, okay? And yes, Lee County is one of my 23 markets. All right, so do you guys get that? Mark choosing a market, was that pretty simple? Okay, cool. All right, so these are the filters. Um, like I said, take a picture of this. This is great information for you to analyze. Um, here are some of the important details I covered already, right? Narrow down to two to three markets. As you guys are going through this, don't be in 3,000 places, right? We wanna be in two to three markets to start off with. And by markets, I mean in one state, one uh, a specific city or a zip code okay don't be too too broad and out all right 
Um, number two is choosing a strong market is just as important as finding builders, right? And do not, y'all, because some people get so excited, y'all, they come in here and they just want to start talking to sellers without having any builders. Y'all need to find builders first. Remember my strategy, builder first. Find builders first, then start talking to sellers. People get excited and start talking to sellers, locking things up under contracts, and they don't have a buyer, and you're just going to waste time, okay? Um, a good rule of thumb, like I said, is be at 800 or more, okay? Next. Step two, home builders. Builders first. So let's talk about that. How do we find builders? Okay, let me ask you guys a question, pop quiz. Um, tell me down below some of the home builders you guys are familiar with. Maybe they built your home, your home that you're living in, right? What are some of the home builders you're familiar with? Ryan Holmes, Lennar, Dr. Horton, Plutes. Okay, several, several different home builders. KB Homes, very popular. East um, Eastwood Homes, Adams Homes, yes. Home Creations, Plute Homes, yep. Soul Brothers. Yep, absolutely. So you guys are familiar with some home builders. If you are not, you need to get familiar with them. Okay. Here are the top three home builders in the United States. Okay. Number one, DR Horton is the number one home builder in the US. I hope everyone knows that. They um, closed on over 70,000 homes last year and bought, brought in about $3 billion in profit, y'all. That's insane. Okay. But they put in so many people in some new homes, which is amazing. They specialize in single family homes, right? In buying one lot and building, or they build subdivisions. You'll see them everywhere. There's different divisions for DR Horton, okay? You'll see a DR Horton in Tampa. You'll see a DR Horton in South Tampa, Tampa, North Tampa. So every division is different and every division um, it needs land, okay? So when you start calling builders, it's okay to call all the divisions. All right, so that's DR Horton. Lennar is right under them. They um, got in about $2.5 billion in profit, closed on over 53,000 homes. And the next is Plute Homes, which they derive from Plute, Syntex, Del Webb, Don Wyland. So they are, they're doing their thing, okay? So these are the top three. I work with DR Horton and made literally multiple six figures with DR Horton and they are, they're okay to work with y'all. They, they be stressing me a little bit, but I, they put a lot of money in my pocket and in my family's pocket, right? So, all right. Did you know that finding home builders that are going to give you their criteria is the most important task? And not only the most important task, but can sometimes be a little tough. And the reason why I say tough is because not a lot of people have the skill sets to talk to people, Right. Go ahead and put a one in the chat if you're an introvert and you don't like talking to people and you're like super shy, you're like super nervous on talking on the phone with people. Um, yeah, so everybody who's putting a one, you need to break out of your shell, okay? Because the number one thing we do as wholesalers is to connect people and network, right? And talk to people. Francisco's dropping it in, TTP. Talk to people is key, right? Without talking to people, you will not connect the dots and you will not make money. So you got to get out of your comfort zone immediately. So let's prepare our mindsets and talk a little bit about it, okay? Uh, qualified builders is defined as a home builder or an end buyer who's open to working with you and gives you their buying criteria, like how much they're paying and where they're buying. That's all we need. How much are you paying and where are you buying? Because what I'm going to go do is hunt for those deals, right? Um, finding home builders is a task that should be part of your business consistently. Okay. I've been doing this for almost five years now, and I still, to this day, am still finding home builders because I could be leaving money on the table if a new home builder moves in and they're paying more than what my builders pay. Right. So it's a constant job that has to be done. Yeah. You can offload that to virtual assistants eventually. And it's okay to follow up with builders if they do not reply to your initial point of contact. Okay. It's okay. They're very busy. Now, how do we find these home builders? Number one method to finding home builders is Google. Okay. I literally Google search home builders in Tampa, Florida, home builders in Lee County. Actually, let's look at it. Let's just look at it together, right? Okay. I'm going to type it in home. Oops. Home builders in Tampa. Boom. If I go to this and I look at it, right? The first thing I want to do, oops, hold on, this thing's popping up. The first thing I want to do is scroll down to where it says businesses. I'm going to click on more businesses. 
right? And I always get the sponsored ones at first. I always go like, just scroll down and look at all of these, right? So I go in and just start looking at all these home builders. And as you guys can tell, I have their number right here. Now, what I will tell you is you're going to see a lot of custom home builders. A lot of them will tell you, hey, you know, being that we're a custom home builder, we don't buy land, we develop on our clients' lots. So I will tell you that's something that you will hear a lot with custom home builders. So I skip those, okay, just as a heads up. Um, but the rest that just say home builder or doesn't have the word custom, you can go to town and call these guys, right? So let me do Lee County as an example. So I'm going to go to Lee County. And as you guys can tell, there's literally dozens and dozens of pages, right? 168 pages of builders in here. So there's a lot of opportunity for everyone in here to find these builders, okay? And let's talk about what you even say on the phone with them when you talk to them, right? Let's see what that looks like. Oops. Okay. Now, when you talk to home builders, what you're going to say to them is this, right? Being that you're talking like to DR Horton or whatever, conversation is going to sound like this. Ready? <clears throat> um, thank you for calling DR Horton. This is Mar uh, Veronica speaking. How may I help you? Right? Or how may I direct your call? And then you're going to say this. Um, Hi, uh, Veronica. I just had a quick question. Are you guys buying any vacant lots at the moment? Okay. If she says, no, we're not buying. Okay. You're going to uh, record that information. Uh, notate when you talk to them and the date. And then you follow up with them at like the next quarter, right? In the next three months. Now they say, yes, we're always buying. How can I help you? Okay, great. Do you have a land acquisition specialist who handles that? If so, what's their email? So I can send them over what I have. Okay. Something like that. Now I will have you guys notate this right now. Land acquisition specialist, write that down. Okay. The land acquisition specialist, their job is to acquire land for the home builder. Okay. That's their title. That's their job. Um, now we want to know who handles that so I can, um, send them over what I have. Okay. When you say send them over what I have, it inclines them to want to send over or provide you their email because you're providing value to them. Right. So, and the reason why I say email, okay. And not say transfer me to them is because number one, they don't know you. Right. Number two, you be, you may be catching them at a bad time to bombard them with all the questions we need. And then number three, an email allows you to document everything, have their information to send over deals and all that good stuff, right? And then you can build your relationship through there. So do not call them and say, hey, oh, y'all are buying land? Okay, great. Uh, well, how much you paying? Where are you buying? Like that's absolutely not. I've tested this hundreds and hundreds of times and this is the best method, right? So get their email. Once you get their email, you should um, per, uh, let them know, hey, my name is Derby. Um, I noticed that you guys are developing new construction in the area. Um, are you able to provide me the following details? And then you can bullet point them. Okay, I need to know where you're buying, how any specific cities or zip codes you love to, you know, you're, you're purchasing right now, any additional details to help you start finding deals, okay? Um, but yes, finding the land acquisition specialist, uh, contacting them by email is the best form of contact. Got it? Okay, so we're not calling them, right? And, and bombarding them, okay? Make that clear. Now let's talk about hitting numbers because honestly, this is a numbers game, right? Um, how many builders should I talk to, Derby, right? So number one bullet point here says, contact a total of 50 builders a day, y'all. 50 builders a day for the next five business days. This should take you about two to two and a half hours to do a day, okay? Um, once you do that, your goal is to obviously get their email address, reach out to them, and hopefully get back between seven to 10 qualified builders in each market, right? Qualified builders are gonna give you their criteria of how much they're buying and where they're paying. Remember that. If you do not get that number of seven to 10 qualified builders, you need to do so until you, um, you reach that number. Keep track of all your builders you spoke with on an Excel sheet or your CRM. I like to do an, uh, an Excel sheet just so everything is electronic for, uh, on uh, electronic Basis versus having it, you know, on a piece of paper that you might lose, right? So just try to keep everything organized. So 50 builders a day, y'all. This will work if you do it at 50 builders a day, promise you. Step number three, now that you have builders that gave you criteria, it's time to now start marketing to sellers, which is honestly my favorite part, right? So finding sellers that are willing to sell their property and give it to you to, um, to provide to your home builder. 
All right, talking to sellers. So one of the questions I always get is, okay, Derby, how much um, how much do I offer to the seller? Okay, think about it. If your builder tells you how much he's paying, what are you gonna offer? You're gonna offer less than what your builder is paying. They're paying 100 grand, you offer your seller 90 grand. Try to offer them whatever it takes for you to get a lesser price, right? And let's talk about negotiation, okay? This is a skill that you must learn. Like I told you earlier, I'm a recovering people pleaser. So your girl was constantly losing out on money because I did not know how to negotiate, okay? It didn't come easy for me. I was always giving them what they wanted versus trying to negotiate, which is something you do not want to do. You work hard for your, your business, right? You work hard to get skip tracing. You work hard for all those things. So you must be well compensated, right? Here are some of the ways you guys can market to sellers or talk to them. Number one is by sending them a text message, okay? There are certain tools that you can purchase that can send them out all at one time or some send them out at a fast dripping rate, okay? There are so many different CRMs. The one that I use is called Flow Fusion. Um, if Francisco's on, please drop my link down below. Flow Fusion, it allows you to send all your text messages out um, in a dripping mode. You can send them out all at once. Um, and it does automatic follow-ups for you. So that way you don't have to follow up if a seller doesn't respond. All of those things help make my life a lot easier being that so much can be automated within your CRM. All right. Um, cold calling. I'm sure you guys are familiar with cold calling. That allows you to call sellers one at a time, right? Or call them through a dialer. Um, mailers, sending out mail. Okay, a lot of home builders already do that technique. So I personally don't like that. Okay. And then manual cold calling is the one by one. When I have no money and I was broke, your girl was manually cold calling on her actual phone to talk to these sellers. Now there's a really good book called The Negotiation Bible by Chris Haskins that I always recommend to everyone. If you have an issue with negotiating, um, this will really help you as far as trying to um, use human psychology in order to um, educate the other person to sell, right? Um, marketing to sellers must be something that's consistent. Um, one thing that happened to me all the time in the beginning was I would close a $10,000 deal and then literally I would act like I didn't know what I was doing, right? So I would be going out, going on vacations for two, three weeks at a time, forgetting out, forgetting I had a business, doing all the things, but being in my bag, right? So when you are making money, you need to pour your money back into your business and constantly still talk to sellers. So that way you're closing deals consistently. Make sense? Um, let's see, I don't think Francisco got off. I'll put it in the chat for you. All right, step four is um, automation and scaling. Okay, a lot of people don't tell people about you know the automation side of this business, but being that it's virtual, there's so much you can automate, so that way you don't have to do so much manual tasks. Which I love this. Okay, so number one uh, thing that everyone here needs to understand is uh, your goal as an entrepreneur is not to make a bunch of money. Like right, we don't. I mean, as much as we love money. Our goal is not to just make it. Our goal is to automate it. Automate your business, allow it to grow and move on its own without you constantly having to be there to make it move, right? So make sure that you know that in order for you to do that, you need to learn your skills, learn the skill set, create your own lane, master it, and rinse and repeat, okay? Um, and then put someone in place to do your day-to-day -day tasks in your business, Um and remember, our goal as CEOs is to work, um, isn't to be working in the business, but to, to be working on the business, right? So go ahead and in the chat and tell me down below, what are some things you can do to work in your business, okay? What are some things you can do to work in your business? I'll give you guys the first one. Um, talking to sellers. What's another one? What are some other things you guys can do to work in your business? Marketing. Yep. Cold calling builders, reaching out to buyers, meetings. Okay. Marketing. So all the little manual tasks that take forever, like those little time consuming tasks. I like to call them like $5 tasks, something that you can offload to a virtual assistant. And then to work on your business, what are some tasks to work on your business? Okay. And, okay, Manuel said scale. Yep, network. What else? 
automations, okay? Looking at your automations, adding more to it. Yep. So those are, yep, collaborate. Love that. Yes. So some of the things you want to do to work on your business, be the visionary, have, yep. So as you guys can think, I think of these three CEOs, right? Um, they are not working in their business. They're working on their business, how they can expand the business, how they can make it grow, how they can do things to make it um, just make more money, right? Um, so those are things that I want you guys to start thinking about. And I want you to think like these three CEOs, Pinky Cole, Elon Musk, and Jeff um, Bezos. So those are things I want you guys to start thinking like, okay, start preparing your mindset as you make this money. All right. Yes, Veronica, let's, speaking of SOPs, let's dive into that a little bit because a lot of people don't know what that is. Okay, take notes, y'all. SOP stands for uh, Standard Operating Procedures. Okay, this is basically a step-by-step -step process that uh, that um, is that you can create for each and every task in your business. So let me give you an example. If I have a virtual assistant who I'm going to be um, having call builders for me and maintaining that relationship, I can create a step-by-step -step process on how they can do that, right? So let's talk about the three departments for this business. Number one is acquisition. Okay. Acquisition means to acquire. So acquire sellers. Um, so that the department can be a group of VAs that you have that can talk to sellers, negotiate for you and all that good stuff. Right. Disposition is the second department. So disposition, getting rid of. So finding builders to get rid of those properties. You want a VA to come in and find builders and maintain professional relationships with them. And then the last department is your admin department. That should be the first thing that you automate because it's very time consuming and they're very simple, repetitive tasks, right? So pulling a list, finding sellers, exporting them, skip tracing them, all those little tasks that are just wasting your time but take hours to do can be automated, okay? So you wanna create those step-by-step -step processes in order on how to do those things for them to do it, right? So think of it from that perspective. All right, utilizing a CRM. Put a one in the chat if you use a CRM right now, okay? Put a one in the chat if you use a CRM. Um, a CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management Tool. This is basically a tool that's used um, to keep things organized, okay? Okay, several of you guys are using CRMs. What CRMs are y'all using? I'm just curious. Um, it allows you to have your goals in there, stay organized, create your schedule, see what numbers are, um, what numbers you're hitting, um, where to make improvements, things like that to help you work on your business, right? So um, a good CRM is really what's going to help you take, take you to the next level. Trying to do tasks manually so much is really going to throw you off and not want to do it consistently. Okay, so I see some of the ones you're using, REI Cash, REI Reply, Tax, um, uh, there's a bunch of different ones y'all are using, cool. Uh, I use uh, Flow Fusion. I'm gonna put it in the chat here for you guys. Um, Flowfusion.io. So that's the one that I use. Um, and the reason why I use it is just because, like I said, the automation side and I run other businesses as well and I can integrate everything together. So like my coaching, right? The text blasting that goes out for my sellers, all that can be integrated in one. Now let's talk about my success stories of my students who've been able to do the same thing. So I always talk about these three ladies. Um, Sarah, Sarah um, was a nurse. Actually, I have her whole entire video on my on my YouTube, she did a whole interview for me, you know, kind of explaining what she's been able to do after learning land. She is a mother of three little kiddos. At the time, they were one, three, and five. Um, she made her first $100,000 in one month, seven months after working alongside me. Um, and now she owns a CRM. If you guys are familiar with REI Cash, she owns that. So she's been able to do that and fully, you know, get her business off the ground. And now it's fully automated. I also been... Um, have another great woman. Her name is Nicole Banks. 
Um, as you guys heard in my intro video, I made a hundred grand on one deal. She has been able to surpass me to $122,000 on one land deal. Um, and she did a, um, she learned from me, not from a mentorship. She actually did one of my events and learned the process step-by-step kind of like this. Um, and she joined my mentorship after and now has a fully automated land business too. And then my girl, uh, Danielle, Danielle owned a title company um, and she was closing not only my deals, but some of my students land deals. And she was just wiring us money all the time and was like, dang, like what the heck is going on? What, what are y'all doing? What are y'all working on over there? I'm constantly wiring you guys multiple five figures every single week. And it's like, what are y'all doing? So I told her and explained to her kind of what I do. And now she's one of my coaches. She closed an $80,000 land deal after joining my mentorship and has been able to now have a fully automated land business and still to this day is doing this. So, and close her title company. Um, so yes, there's a lot of uh, success in this business and there's a lot of opportunity for everybody here to do the same. Okay, so put the word me in the chat if you are going to be the, my next success story. Put the word me in, in the chat if you are going to be my next success story. I'm sure, everyone in here is going to be successful in this, right? Nice. Good. I'm excited. All right, let's talk about what Land has been able to do for my lifestyle. I love this. Um, for those who seen my video in the beginning, um, my dad, I've been able to retire my dad. He came from Haiti. Um, when he was 16 and has um, just really been working two, three jobs to support me and my other sisters um, and my mom. So it was only right that after I made my first seven figures, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and retire my dad. And I'm sure everyone on this call has somebody that they have in their life that they want to retire or just, you know, provide something to, to ease off the pressure. Who in here has that kind of a similar situation where they're like, oh, my mom, I really want to retire my mom or my aunt or my grandma or whoever. It just feels great to be able to have done this for my dad. Now this man is on my payroll, just living his best life. He ain't doing nothing for me all. He, it's just so cute to see him, to be able to just see what he's doing now with his life. Oh, someone said they retired their mom two years ago. I love, isn't that the best, best feeling? Oh, I just love it. Um, so yes, what is your why? I'm sure you guys have kids. You guys have things that are going on that you want to be able to put this towards and make this work and make the income to do whatever it is that your goals are, right? Um, one of the things I love is traveling. I love traveling. I've been able to go to Europe a few times over the last um, last year, really, um, and bring my whole family and pay for everybody. And that is just what brings me so much joy. I bought my first house, y'all. Um, at uh, I bought it in the at the end of 2021, early 2022. And the thing I love about the fact that I've been able to buy my house is not because I bought the house, it was because of how I got my house. I worked with a home builder called MI Homes around here in Tampa. Um, and I forfeited a few of my assignment fees in order for them to build me a new construction townhome and get me into that house within two months, y'all, while everybody was on a waiting list for the last uh, year. So I got in in two months and everybody is still waiting a year. So being able to have that relationship with my home builder allowed me to get this opportunity. So I always mention that, y'all. So yes, and then I met my man, my man, my man. I always talk about my man. So my, I met my boyfriend Vance through real estate. Um, and we have been able to do so much in the land space. We have an Airbnb, we have a pad split now. And just being able to see, you know, both of us flourish in this way has just been such an amazing thing. And if you guys were at the Miami event, I actually talked about this, how you know, it's just, I think it's just very important. I know it's a lot of topic, but I think it's a little, I think it's very important for women, especially women in real estate to find someone that can take you out of that masculine energy, being that we are in a male dominated industry of real estate. Um, and just being able to have someone that can support you and thank you, support you and take you out of that masculine energy. I was, I always say this, like there was a one point where he'll be like, come give me a hug. And I'm like, no, don't touch me. And then he's like, listen, 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 you're not the land queen anymore. Like calm that shit down. And it's just, it's just so good to have someone like that. So I just feel like I'm, real estate has brought me to him and just being, you know, in the presence of all these different people I've, I've learned and meet, met so many different people. So there's a lot that 
you know, I'm doing now with real estate. I'm working on some new construction, new builds for affordable housing now. So yeah, I'm very happy and grateful. Thank you guys. Um, so yeah, I'm sure everyone here has their goals and what they want to do. So just know what that is and allow that to drive you when times get hard, because as entrepreneurs, that is going to happen. Okay. Now tonight, I want you guys to make sure you connect with me, follow me on all platforms.